We are going to have a quick look at how to correctly reference other operators inside Touch Designer across different levels. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am on my master level and I'm inside project one. I'm going to create a new chop uh, constant. I'm going to call this reference. And instead of channel one, I'm going to call it reference one. So now if I wanted to make a reference to this value here, whatever it may be, in another value, if I make another chop and I say target, I call this target. I have a few options on how I could do it. The first is I could dynamically link it using the chop. So I could activate its viewer by pushing the plus, and then I could use the green activation so you can see here my cursor changes. And I could drag this over to my target value. You see the arrow changes, or the cursor changes to the arrow with the plus. Drop it, and then I get all these options. Export chop relative chop reference, chop reference, or current chop value, or text. So these are uh, five different ways that we can take this value here and put it into this value here. Export chop, relative chop, and chop reference are all dynamic links, which means that when one chop updates, the other will also update. They're just different programmatic ways of doing it. Current chop value and text will literally just take whatever the value currently is and pass it over. My common uh, my most common go-to is relative chop reference, which if we drop down the value, you can see that it creates the full programmatic reference for this chop in this one. So now if I update my reference, my target will instantly update as well. Now in, in target, you can see that it's written OP reference and then reference one. And what that directly relates to is it's saying, go and get the operator reference signified by this, and then go and get its channel value for reference one. So we're telling it to go get reference and get reference one. If I made a second and let's call it second ref, I made its value 0 0.5. I could hand write that by doing second target. And then here I'm gonna enable it turn into expression mode and write operator. So I want to go and get reference again. Reference. But this time I want to get the second channel. So I'm going to get second ref. And now this target will update to be dynamically linked to follow whatever reference means. Now, with these programmatic references, we should be able to, in theory, if I split my screen in two, and I take, copy this and take it up a level and paste it. So now I'm outside of project one, and you can see that inside, this is inside project one and this is outside project one. If I update my two references, the internal target still updates, but our external one gives us the error that none type is not scriptable. And the none type error inside Python normally means that uh, our references can't be found anymore. And that's because we're looking for operator reference on this level. What I need to do is update target to tell it that reference is actually inside project one. So like when writing a path on Windows or Mac, I'm literally just gonna tell it. So I'm gonna do project one forward slash reference. project one forward slash reference. And now you can see that uh, I've effectively just taken the full path from up here and attached it in our reference. So now both of these will update in the exact same time frame, uh, but they are two unique references to our reference. We also have the option to do it the other way around. So if I take our reference and paste it up here, I'm going to call the, I'll leave it called reference, and I'm going to make a new target. I'm going to call it outside target. Instead of linking to this reference, I want to go and tell it to get the reference that's currently outside of project one. Now, I could do that by hard coding the entire path to this. So if I put a slash beforehand, this reference will now be linked to this one. 
So you can see when I update the outside one, the inside one updates. And that's because that's the direct path to that node. I also have the option of where I can do it in what's called a dynamic link. And instead of just saying, go and look for the this exact file, what I want it to do is I want it to go up one level outside of project one and find reference there. So for that, I'm going to do dot dot slash and I'm going to do dot dot slash in and in Python and in touch designers, Python module dot dot slash. It means go up one level on the file path. So now you can see that using two different forms of referencing, I've connected this net, this reference outside to this target inside. So far, all we've been doing is referencing channels inside chops. But the referencing system is way more powerful than that. So if I go back to a single network and inside our project one, let's say I have a folder. And in here, I'm going to go and find a video that I know I have on my desktop. So I'm going to select the desktop folder and I'm going to do it files only and only movies. So you can hear I've got counting and counting audio that I used for another video recently. What I can do is I can add in a movie file in and let's say I want to go into this folder and get its table data. So instead of referencing this, I'm going to do the same as we did before. I'm going to sit, tell it to go to the operator folder one, but instead of getting a channel, I'm going to tell it to go and get the cells of the table. So I have a few options for this. The first I can do is hard code it. So I can literally say go to row one, column one, and that's it, it will load it. Actually, I'm gonna load column two here, or row two here, because that's actually a moving video. It's another version of the touch designer map uh, base one. So I've told it to go into this table, go to row two, column one, and get whatever that value is as its path. And you can see that it goes to my desktop and gets counting.mov. But what happens if this was a constantly changing table. So I could reference it knowing that, okay, I want to get row two, but I want to go and make sure I always get the path. So instead of saying one or get column one, I'm telling it to go and get whatever path the column path is. So now when I change it, nothing will happen, but instead of using two one, it's directly referencing row two and the path column. So referencing tables inside touch can be super powerful and it's something you will get into a lot more the, the further down uh, the development cycle you go. It's, it's something that features in nearly every one of my projects now because I do something like this. I will have a project folder that contains all of my footage and then I will link to that footage using this method rather than having to rely on loading and transferring files between machines. This way I can guarantee as long as I have a folder of content everything will link up fine. And the third and final option is if I load in another movie file in, when we click on a node, everything up here in this window is called the parameter window and all of these are parameters of that node. Not only can we programmatically reference values, but we can also programmatically set parameters. So if I bring in a blank text, uh, and let's say that I want to redo this. So I'm going to copy this here and I'm going to open this in Textport and I'm going to write some text. So I'm going to write some code here and I'm going to say operator movie file in two and instead of referencing a channel I'm going to reference its parameter so I'm going to say dot par for go and get your parameter value for file and I'm going to verify that so when you expand something down you can see its full programmatic parameter name so this is just file play modes would be play mode uh, q point would be q point no space and so on so now I'm saying from this text script I'm going to say go to this and set your file to be equal to that. Now, with a bit of luck, if I was to right click and run this script, it will, oh, I've not put it in speech marks, edit. I'm gonna put it in speech marks because I want it to fill the text field rather than be an expression here. So now if I run it, 
you'll see that the file changes from being expression to just a normal constant because I've set it to be a text reference to a file. And as before, without that, I could do it similar to this. So I could do reference the table and say, so folder one, two, path. Now, if I run the script, it will do the same. But let's change that to one so it loads the other file, run it. And you can see that it automatically changes a full new text path in here because I'm running this script, which goes over to my folder to get the path which then sends it into movie file in two. Let's do it a bit more advanced. So let's say constant. And then I also, so I'm, I've got this, which allows me to set my video file. So I can run it and change it to file. But I also want to make it dynamically update its speed via this constant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a chop execute. And then on, what's going to happen when I right click this and add the chop execute, it basically says this chop execute dat will run its script when value change happens. So whenever a value in here changes, it will run. If we edit the content, you can see there's a bunch of pre-built functions that we aren't using here, but the function for on value change, this is what where code is executed anytime something happens. So in here, I'm going to say operator movie file, in two dot par dot and I want to change the speed I said so it's just the speed it's equal to val and if I print val and then comment this out you can see that when I change the value inside channel uh, inside this constant chop you can see that it prints out whatever value it changes to so now if I uncomment this and delete that row, whenever I change this, it's going to adjust the speed of my movie file in dynamically based on the value in here. But that is a super quick overview on how to reference operators and values inside Touch Designer correctly.